What's up, what's up? I'm Gabe Pluguez here. I'm the founder of DefaultKings.com. We help Christian entrepreneurs lose 10 to 30 pounds of fat and keep it off. The way we do that is we teach them a biblical process to finally change their default actions, the habits that they default to mindlessly when they're tired, bored, stressed, overwhelmed, traveling, or just that kind of pattern of falling off the wagon again and again after losing a few pounds and then gaining it back and losing a few pounds and then gaining it back. Um, uh, so anyway, in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be revealing for the very first time the entire biblical process that we use to help guys like Gavin, who you see right here, lose the body fat and keep it off. Okay, so if this even remotely interests you, if losing the body fat and finally keeping off and finally becoming consistent um, and finally doing the things that you know you're supposed to be doing, um, if finally having actions that are in alignment with the person who you say you are, the person who you know God is calling you to be, if that sounds even remotely interesting to you, then get into some kind of private room and put in your headphones or just listen to this uninterrupted and uh, watch the whole thing through and take notes on the process because I'm going to reveal the entire process that we used to help Gavin go from this to this uh, right here for the very first time. And uh, if you do this process, it absolutely will lead to results like you see here if you do it and do it consistently. But the best part about this is I'm going to teach you how to actually do it consistently because that's the part that a lot of guys struggle with, right? Like some of the things you probably already know how to do in terms of making sure that you're not overeating and you know you need to be exercising consistently, right? But the hard part is getting yourself to actually do it consistently. So I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that right here. But anyway, here's the full breakdown. Let's dive right in. I've got like an hour or so blocked off for me to film this video. I'm not exactly sure how long it's going to take. Um, I'm just going to go. And uh, uh, from there, we'll Make sure that at the end of this, you know exactly what you need to do to lose the body fat and keep it off and finally become consistent and finally change your default actions, which is the number one thing holding you back from actually losing the body fat and keeping it off in the first place, right? So uh, let's get into it. So how we help the father of five who runs multiple businesses lose 32 pounds of fat in 12 weeks while gaining muscle without taking away time from his businesses or family and he didn't have to give up eating out or family dinners or traveling. And he went from this on the left at a starting point where you kind of see some of that just classic dad fat uh, starting to form around the back that in his words was disgusting. And then on the right, you can't really tell if he's a father of five who owns multiple businesses or like a Baywatch model, right? <laughs> um, and then here's from the front, uh, lost 32 pounds. You can see just the softness in the midsection and the chest really. And you can kind of see in the face too and the neck. Um, but on the right, you see the chiseled jawline um, you see the defined arms and shoulders, you see the chest looking sharp, and you see the abs coming in in the midsection. Um, so before I continue and give you this biblical process, and before you sit down and invest uh, the time, attention, and energy to learn this process, we need to make sure that we're on the same page in terms of beliefs. Okay, so it's no secret that at Default Kings, we are Christians, um, we are conservatives, we value family, we value freedom, um, we value faith above all. And we believe that every single thing that we do is supposed to point to God. It's supposed to honor God. It's supposed to glorify the name of Jesus, okay? And I truly believe that every single thing that we do is fundamentally tied to the word of God, is fundamentally tied to the teachings of Christ. And so if we're not in agreement that Christ is the ultimate authority, um, then everything I say isn't really going to be actually ingrained within you. If we're not in agreement that Christ is the ultimate authority in your life, then you're going to reject the things that are revealed to you here today, right? And it's not going to actually work for you because you're not going to ingrain it. You're going to reject it. Um, but if we're in agreement that Christ is the ultimate authority, if we're in agreement that every single thing that we should do should honor God, then this is going to resonate really, really well. Um, and you're going to be able to apply the lessons that I teach and you're going to be able to actually make them part of your lifestyle um, versus me just being, you know, some Christian dude who you hate on the internet. So if you're one of the guys who is just looking for a reason to hate on my YouTube comments, um, I guess you can watch the entire video <laughs> if you want just to get yourself pissed off. Um, but if you're a Christian guy who believes Christ is the ultimate authority in your life and you want to learn how to actually align your behaviors with that belief so that your health can point to him, so that your body can be a display of the discipline, drive, and self-control that he grants you, of the freedom that he grants you, then watch this entire video. Um, now, moving on, we need to answer the question, should Christians even be fat, 
right? Like, does it dishonor God to have our bodies be overweight, unhealthy, sick, weak, unattractive? Does that dishonor God? Let's go through some of the verses of the Bible that speak to this. Um, the first verse here is First Thessalonians uh, 4.4. 4. And this says that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that's holy and honorable. I'm not sure if it gets any more straightforward than that, right? We should learn to control our own bodies, to control, to have dominion over our own, over our own bodies. The reason that God gave us dominion over the things of the earth, right? We should be able to be in control of the temptations of the world. We should be able to be in control of our own bodies. We should be able to decide if this thing is healthy or not. We should be able to decide if this thing needs to lose excess body fat or not. We should be able to decide if this thing honors God and can be used as an asset to glorify him and, and, and build his kingdom or not, right? We should be able to learn how to control our bodies in a way that's holy and honorable, okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 31 says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Ask yourself that question. Does eating the foods consistently that sabotage your health and sabotage your body, does that glorify God? Or would it be better to eat the food consistently and do the things with your body consistently that take care of his temple and point to his glory? Ask yourself that question. Um, the third verse here is Romans 12.1. I don't think that uh, that it, it gets really more straightforward than this. Uh, Romans 12.1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Are you offering your body as a living sacrifice? Is it holy? Is it pleasing to God? Or are you using your body as a form of self-indulgence, overindulgence, right? Are you giving into your fleshly desires? Um, 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, You were bought at a price, therefore honor your, your bodies. Okay? Our bodies, the vehicles that God have loaned us, they, they, they weren't, we don't have these. We don't have life on earth. We don't have free life on earth for no reason. Right? Jesus died for our sins. He paid the price for us to be able to be here on earth and create disciples and point people to him. And so we should treat our bodies in a way that honors him. Right? Let's continue here. Um, let's see. Uh, verse number five. I think I cut off the actual verse here. Um, but you can you can look this one up. Um, I can't remember the exact scripture off the top of my head. Anyway, um, verse number five here that I, have, that I have written down. I believe it's in Proverbs or Psalms. It says, if you have found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of it and vomit. So this is the Bible speaking directly to using an example of, of, of rejecting overindulgence and using the example of overeating specifically, speaking to why that's not honorable, why that's a sin, right? Don't overeat. Don't have more than you need. Don't overindulge. How many of you guys are literally stuffing your faces to the point where you feel like you're going to vomit every single night when you know you don't need to eat that much, right? You know that deep down you feel your stomach about to explode, yet you keep eating, right? So if you have fun, found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of it and vomit. Um, the sixth verse here is, if anyone destroys God's temple, this is this one's harsh, okay? So again, if you don't agree that Christ is the ultimate authority, if you're not a Christian, this might offend you. But if you are and you believe he's the ultimate authority, then you're going to have the reverence, fear, and respect that this verse deserves, okay? First Corinthians 3, 17. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. So if we destroy this thing, if we self-sabotage this thing, if we decrease this thing's ability to serve God's people and honor him, if we decrease this thing's ability to influence the people in our lives who are supposed to point to him, God will destroy us. That's what this verse says right here. If anybody destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred and to get out of the temple. The Holy Spirit lives within us. God works through us. These bodies were loaned to us in order to point people to him. And so if we destroy these things, which are tools that God gave us on this temporary earth for the goal of eternal life and salvation, then we will be destroyed. I don't know if it is any more clear than that. Um, okay, moving on. In case you needed any more actual evidence to why it's important to take care of your body as a Christian. Uh, Proverbs 21, 25, the craving of a sluggard will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. A sluggard is a lazy person. Okay, so if you find yourself plopping on the couch at the end of every single night and you know you need to actually be doing something that's supposed to better you, like hit the gym, or maybe use the dumbbells that are collecting dust in your garage right now, um, then 
the word God here says that the craving of a sluggard, the craving of somebody who's lazy, the desire of somebody who is lazy and slow will be the death of him. It's your habits right now. It's that plopping on the couch. It's that default action of not doing something when you know you should that will be the death of you. So let's continue. Okay, who is Gavin Pike? Who is this man? And how was he able to do this while balancing being a father of five? Okay, his wife is also a picture here. I'm, I'm keeping their faces blurred just for protection of the family. Um, Gavin himself is a public figure though. Uh, but this is about Gavin. Anyway, how was he able to do all that while balancing being a father of five, um, being an elected official in the state of Ohio, okay, and owning multiple businesses. This is actually Gavin um, on uh, Real America, and uh, it's him uh, basically being interviewed for his involvement in a school board movement in his town in Ohio that was uh, essentially arguing to make sure that bathrooms stayed separate between um, men and women in uh, the high school in the town um, because the school board was trying to argue for um, essentially uh, transgender bathrooms or same-sex bathrooms um, and Gavin was one of the leaders in fighting against that movement and he's being interviewed here on Real America because of that. Um, here is another uh, just uh, news feature of Gavin, one of uh, quite a few that you can find online um, where he is, is rallying for um, the high school to keep boys and girls bathroom separate because men and women are different. Okay. And God only created two genders, right? Um, here's uh, Gavin fighting for that again, one more time. Here's just one of the responsibilities he has. He's actually the, uh, the CFO of the Monclava township. He's a fiscal fiscal officer to this day. Um, he also has his own financial planning business. Um, and he is also just a father. Okay. He's a father. He's an all around good guy who on top of being serious about everything that he's involved in and serving God's people in every way that he possibly can with the gifts that God gave him, he loves his family. This is him um, elk hunting in Wyoming with uh, one of the sons, um, which is just awesome, insane. Um, so how did you know Gavin actually do this? How did he go from 240 pounds at the start here um, to 208 pounds um, in three months? Um, this is gonna be the full breakdown of the easy to follow predictable three-step process okay how he went from 240 pounds here on the left to 208 pounds um, on the right here in uh, three months now let me get a sip of water so that I can dive in the real linchpin I guess you could say the real secret here isn't like some fad diet that Gavin did it's not like some weird New Year's hit boot camp challenge workout program that he did. It wasn't personal training. Um, it wasn't trying to like just bang head, his head against the wall and track his calories on his own and try to figure it out himself. Um, again, it wasn't keto, it wasn't paleo, it wasn't carnivore, it wasn't anything like that. Um, the way that Gavin actually achieved this was he changed his default actions. Okay, now I mentioned default actions earlier, but what, what actually are your default actions? The way I explain it is these are the habits you default to either mindlessly or when you're bored, tired, stressed, overwhelmed, or when routines change. The things that you know that you shouldn't be doing that you find yourself doing anyway, like reaching your hand to the bag of chips when you know the chips are, are making you fat, yet you find yourself munching away anyway, like turning into the McDonald's drive-thru on your way home from work when you know the McDonald's drive-thru isn't gonna help you be any healthier for your family or set any better of an example for your kids, you do it anyway. Um, or when you know you should do something but you don't do anything, right? Like when you're sitting on the couch staring at the TV and, you know, your kid asks, hey, dad, want to go play? And you're like, no, I'm too tired. I have to work or whatever. And <laughs> you know that instead of plopping on the couch, maybe you should actually get a workout in. Maybe, right? Maybe you, you're aware of that already, but you don't do it, um, even though you know you should be doing it. Um, those, those are your default actions, right? Um, the things that make it impossible for you to be consistent, make things that make it impossible for you to actually keep the weight off. Those habits that creep back in when motivation wanes or when circumstances change that lead to you gaining the weight back, that keep you stuck in this cycle that eventually will lead to the demise that we know overeating leads to. Maybe it's blowing up to 300 pounds. Maybe it's actually getting heart disease like your father or grandfather or uncles, right? Maybe it's getting high blood pressure. Maybe it's getting diabetes. Maybe it's getting pancreatic cancer. 
because your pancreas is in overtime producing insulin to try to compensate for all the food that you're constantly eating, right? Um, I don't know if I need to continue going down the list. Maybe it's liver sclerosis. Maybe it's um, some any other kind of, of metabolic disease or heart disease that comes from overeating, right? Maybe it's the joint pain that you're starting to feel set in right now because of the constant over bearing weight that you have to walk around with day after day after day after day after day, right? Maybe it's the back pain that you're experiencing from the belly that's constantly pulling you over 24 seven. Um, well, how do we actually change the behaviors that lead to, to those outcomes? Um, now here's, here's what the Bible says about default actions. Okay. Because I didn't make this up. Um, and if I did like, this wouldn't be something that actually works long term. Um, default actions are really just a way that I explain that we communicate what Paul is talking about in Romans seven fifteen through 24. Um, so this is just the, the easy way to communicate. Here's what Paul means. Um, in Romans 17, uh, 15 through 24, uh, Paul says this, uh, Paul says, I do not understand what I do for what I want to do. I do not do, but what I hate I do. Does that kind of sound familiar? Does that kind of resonate with some of the unhealthy habits that you find yourself doing? Whether it's overeating, mindless snacking, binge eating, eating late at night. Maybe there are other unhealthy habits that you find yourself doing outside of just like overeating. Maybe it's over drinking. Maybe it's, you know, spending time or going down the rabbit hole on that website that you should be going down at the end of the night, right? The evil that you know you shouldn't be doing that you find yourself doing. The things you hate because of how they destroy your life and affect your family that you find yourself doing, the things you hate that you do. Um, verse 16 says, and if I do not, if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good as it is. It is no longer I myself who do it, but it is the sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, is my sinful nature, right? Um, so this is, this is really Paul talking about how the, the, the sin that we struggle with, the unhealthy default actions that we struggle with, um, these things, they're, they're, they're part of our human sinful nature, okay? These habits aren't no big deal. This isn't just a little sweet tooth that you have that kind of comes up at the end of the night. This isn't just a few pounds of weight that you gained. We're talking about something that's part of our human nature because of the sin in us. We're talking about a force of evil a force of sin that has overtaken humanity, that has affected people for thousands of years, for the entire history of the human race. Okay, this goes all the way down to our DNA, to Adam, to the original sin. Okay, so we're not dealing with something that's that's no big deal here. I think that's one of the big misconceptions. That's one of the lies of the enemy. That's one of the lies of the world. That being fat is no big deal. That overeating is no big deal. That overdrinking is no big deal. That spending a little bit of time on that website is no big deal. These things are the fruits of sin. These things are the things that lead to death physically and spiritually. Okay, we're dealing with something really serious here. Okay, and uh, Paul acknowledges that here. Um, but how hard are you working to ignore that? How many excuses are you making to self-justify that? How many excuses are you making to ignore that? Um, anyway, going on. Um, by the way, this is the reason that we don't just like encourage you or try to give you a few tools to lose the fat and keep it off. We go straight to the biblical source. We go straight to the biblical process. We use the word of God to combat this sin and these unhealthy default actions because we believe the word of God is the ultimate authority. And that is the only force powerful enough to combat this thing that's part of our sinful human nature. Anyway, onward. Uh, Paul says, for I have the desire to do what is good. Maybe you have the desire to work out and be the guy who's fit, healthy, and sets a good example for your family. But I cannot carry it out. Okay, for I do not do the good I want to do. I don't hit the workouts that I want to hit because they're going to make me a better example for my kids. They're going to make me a better leader for my employees. They're going to make me a more attractive husband to my wife so that we can keep that fire in the marriage alive and we can form that intimacy that the enemy hates so much. Um, but the evil I do not want to do, <laughs> this I keep on doing. The evil I do not want to do. I keep on doing right now. If I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin, sin living in me that does it. Okay. Speaking again to that, the sinful nature of our unhealthy default actions, right? Again, it's not a big deal. It's part of human nature. Um, we are combating a force that literally leads to death physically and spiritually. Okay. And so that's why we need to take it seriously and actually apply uh, the word of God in order to combat it. Now, how do we do that? 
there's there's three steps, like I mentioned earlier. There's a three-step process, and I'm about to reveal that to you here. Um, step number one in the process of changing your default actions is you need to change your identity, okay, your self-perception. You need to change your beliefs, okay, the way you view the world, and you need to change your thoughts, okay, the things that are constantly on your mind. Um, a few kind of biblical passages, again, to support how and why we need to change our identity, beliefs, and thoughts is starting with John 3, 3. Um, Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now, what does that literally mean? I'm pretty sure there's a passage in Scripture 2 where one of the disciples asks, like, does that literally mean be born again? Like, actually inside my mama and come out the womb? Um, but no, obviously this is a metaphor. And when the disciples are talking about being born again, Jesus is talking about being born again, they're talking about becoming a new person, having a shift in identity, having a shift in who I am. I was once this person, and now I'm that person. I was once the overweight dad who was undisciplined and lazy, excuse me, who sacrificed himself for the good of everybody else, right? And uh, who made excuses. But now I'm actually the healthy disciplined dad whose actions are aligned with my words. I'm the healthy disciplined dad who keeps promises to himself. I'm the healthy disciplined dad who is consistent, whose body is a display of his discipline and drive. You need to have an identity shift. You need to change the way you view yourself. You need to be born again, um, like Jesus talks about here. Another example of being born again, of leaving your old self in the past. Here's Romans 6, 6. It says, for we know that our old self our old self, who we were, not who we are, who we were, was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Okay, every time I read this, it just becomes more and more profound to me. Um, but this is crazy, right? Our old self, who we were, who you think, who, were, need, who, you, who you need to have, have been thinking that you were, not who you actually are going to be, your old identity, our old self, was crucified, hung up on the cross with Jesus so that the body ruled by sin, the unhealthy, overweight body ruled by these unhealthy default actions, ruled by the habits you can't break, might be done away with. Does that sound like it might apply to your health and your fitness and your body that you're sitting there with right now hoping to change? For we know that our old self, our old identity, who we thought we were, was crucified with him so that our body ruled by sin might be done away with. How often do you feel like you try to talk yourself out of the unhealthy habits that you try to tell yourself, just go to the gym today, please, Monday. Um, by the way, this is January 2nd. Let's look at this. was just a crazy date. Um, the date of broken promises, I like to say. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, how often, right, do you do you feel like, I, I know I need to make this change, and, and you don't make it? You feel like you're in handcuffs to the habits that you have, to the unhealthy default actions. Wow. Um, again, more profound every single time that I read it. Let's continue. <laughs> if you didn't need any more confirmation as to why the first step here is to change your identity, your beliefs, and your thoughts, okay? Proverbs 23.7 says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Um, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what are the thoughts and beliefs that you have that create who you are, right? Do we believe that you just can't find the time to actually do the workouts consistently? Do we believe that we're just, we just gain weight during the holidays? What else are you supposed to do? Do we think about how we're, do we constantly think about how um, we're stressed or we constantly focus on the stress that leads to us wanting to control that stress with stress eating, right? What do, we, what do we believe and what do we think? What do we believe and what do we think? What are the false beliefs that you hold that are holding you back from being consistent, from losing the weight and keeping it off? Oh, it just gets harder as you get older, right? I know I'm 24 years old at the time of this recording. You might think, what do you know about this young buck? Look, I'm 24 years old, okay? Um, but I'd argue that I already have more work responsibilities than 90% of the work population. Anyway, um, I've seen this take place. The reason that I learned this so early, the reason that I changed these beliefs, identities, and thoughts so early um, is because I was actually able to use wisdom and learn from mistakes I saw of somebody 
before me. Okay, I watched my dad struggle with this into his 30s, 40s, and 50s. And I was able to change the way I think, change the way I believe, change what I believe, and change who I believed I was. I remember my dad used to talk about how diabetes and being overweight was just part of the family curse. That's who he believed he was, which determined his actions. Okay, and I didn't accept that identity. I didn't accept that identity. I always saw myself as somebody who was going to be a leader of men. Okay, and what does a leader of men do? What does somebody with that identity do? Does he overindulge? Does he self-sabotage? No. His body is an example of his discipline and drive. My beliefs, I remember the first time I ever thought and believed, okay, um, that I never want to let my health affect my family. It was after watching my dad have a mental breakdown in the kitchen because his mental health was being affected so poorly by his physical health. And I thought to myself, I never want to let my health affect my family and I'll never let that happen. And then the belief, right? I'm actually capable of finding the time, of making the time to take care of my body. I'm actually capable of controlling my body with the foods that I put in my mouth, right? Um, so changing your thoughts, beliefs, and your identity. What identity do you need to shift? What thoughts do you need to change and that you need to start focusing on? Um, and what beliefs do you need to hold? Maybe it would be useful for you to be intentional about actually changing the things you focus on, changing your thoughts. Maybe it'd be more beneficial to you to actually start to take some gratitude for the people around you and start to take some responsibility, believe that you're held responsible because everybody who looks to you as a leader is going to either trust you or distrust you based on the promises you, keep, you, you say you keep to yourself, right? Maybe that's a belief you need to strengthen because maybe if you truly believed this, then you would act in alignment with it, right? The Bible also says that um, we'll be transformed by the renewing of our mind, right? There needs to be a mindset shift is what I'm saying in the beginning for any of this to actually stick, okay? For any of your default actions to change, for you to actually be consistent, there needs to be a mindset shift. And that's the first thing we do in Default Kings is we focus on the mindset shift. We give guys access to what's called our default action installation system. And it is literally a video module course that teaches you how to have this mindset shift, okay? So that you can finally be consistent and change your default actions. Um, let's move on. After you have this identity shift, the shift in your beliefs, the shift in your thoughts, this mindset shift, um, after you're transformed by the renewing of your mind, after you hang your old self up on the cross, what do you do? You need to execute your new custom default action, okay? The word of God says that faith without works is dead. <laughs> and so, what works need to be in place? Um, the two main works, the two main actions that need to be in place, the two main default actions that lead to you losing body fat, becoming healthy, building the muscle, building a body that displays your discipline and drive are gonna be implementing uh, what we call our easy lean eating system and then our king maker training protocol. Okay, this is just a little snapshot, by the way, here of Gavin's uh, calendar on uh, our private training app. Um, kind of in the middle of this program, you can just see his consistency, right? You can see his default actions. You can see him hitting his push workout, hitting his movement prep workout, hitting his pull workout, right? You can see him tracking his body stats. You can see the body uh, going lower and lower and lower. 211 on this week, 210 on this week, 207.8 on this week. Um, he's tracking his nutrition, right? Um, so what do, what do each of these things look like? Let's go over the easily eating system first. In the easily eating system, there's only two main variables that we pay attention to. Um, variable number one is your calories, okay? Variable number two is your protein. The reason we only focus on calories and protein instead of having to track every single little macro and micronutrient is because these two things right here are going to be the biggest determinant of your body transformation. They're gonna be the biggest determinant of your body composition, of your fat loss and your muscle gain. And if you can lose body fat, then that's gonna have the biggest effect on your health because the excess body fat is essentially surrounding your organs 24 seven, right? The, the fat, fat you see in the mirror is just a fraction of what's actually surrounding your organs. And the protein right here is what's gonna keep you full and satiated, which makes it easier to not overeat. Plus this is what's gonna to lead to muscle growth. Muscle growth is also is obviously what makes you look good, what makes you feel good, what makes you stronger, what prevents injury, what reduces pain. Um, but muscle growth, because muscle is the most metabolically active bodily tissue, which means muscle burns calories 24 seven, the excess muscle that you gain from the protein that you eat in combination with this part, which we'll go over later, this right here is what makes it easy to keep the weight off. There's a reason that somebody like me, I can eat way more than the average American man. I can eat way more than you without gaining a single ounce of body fat while maintaining abs. It's because of the muscle that I have, obviously on top of the default actions that I built without overeating, but the muscle makes it easier for me. 
to maintain the leanness. It makes it easier for the weight to come off. So we need to build muscle too, on top of just losing the body fat, okay? Um, in DK, what we do is we remove all the guesswork for the guys. So we just calculate this for the guys who are in Default Kings. What it typically looks like is, again, and this is custom for everybody, so these are this is a ballpark number, but guys are typically in somewhere between like a 500 and 700 calorie deficit um, when they start Default Kings, depending, and that, that, that initial calorie number is dependent on your actual body weight, your activity level. You can use like caloriecalculator.com to get a, a rough ballpark of this. And if you're consistent and you track it, but you're not losing weight, then you need to decrease calories, okay? Um, we monitor this for guys every single day in Default Kings and make the adjustments necessary. Um, but again, we calculate this for them. We're tracking their calories and protein. We give them those targets in DK, so there's no guesswork on how to lose the fat and build the muscle. Um, they just track this in our private app so that we can see it every single day. Um, and we, we really focus on quantity of total nutrients, calories, and protein um, above the just sheer quality, right? So the reason for that is not to say that quality doesn't matter because the quality of your food is going to determine how you feel. Um, but quantity is going to determine what you actually are, okay? Um, it doesn't matter if I'm eating, um, you know, the, the most ideal organic, um, like, I don't know, steak that I can possibly find um, if I'm overeating steak, okay? I'm going to be fat if I'm overeating, period. Um, so yes, go for, go for quality foods, um, but focus on the quantity. How much protein are you getting in? How many calories are you consuming? A lot of people eat really generally healthy foods you might be sitting there thinking i eat generally healthy but you overeat okay so that's why you're still overweight and unhealthy um and then we also have what's called the 80 20 principle which means that about 80 percent of our foods we shoot for being from those whole food higher quality sources right normal standard healthy enjoyable meal um and then with the 20 percent of that that's where the fun foods come into play right so you can literally do a calculation of like eight out of my 10 meals this week or whatever or over this Two days, two days and a half, um, have been normal, healthy, whole foods that I'm in complete control of, that I planned out, that are taken care of. Um, Twenty percent of them are like I'm going out to eat with my family, right, or whatever it may be, um, or I'm having ice cream with my kids, or whatever it may be, or I'm taking my employees out, my team out to dinner, whatever it may be. Um, now we have had guys who um, have literally eaten a hundred percent fun stuff, a hundred percent eating out and stuff like that. Like one of our guys, Andre Hagel Jr who's lost 21 or 22 pounds now at this point. He's a little over three months in. Um, he eats out twice a day, every single day. Um, he's a super busy entrepreneur, owns three businesses. Um, one of them is, is, a, is a tech startup, so he's just super, super busy. Um, and he eats out at lunch every single day. He eats out with his team every single day. Twice a day, he eats out every single day. So he's actually 100 on the fun food stuff. Um, but because he's tracking his calories and protein, and because these numbers are actually accurate, and he knows what to do, He's down 22 pounds, 22 or 21 pounds. Can't remember the exact number off the top of my head. Um, and then we implement something called uh, calorie reverse dieting. Calorie reverse dieting is where we actually start you with that, like I said, um, around 500 ish to 700 ish calorie deficit. Um, the reason we do this is because in the beginning of you actually being consistent, one of the things that psychologically supports your new default actions and makes it infinitely more likely that you actually stick with it and have the motivation to keep going is seeing results, okay? So many people try to track their calories, try to lose fat, try to lift, try to build muscle, and they don't see results, so they throw in the towel. Because as men, we can't logically justify investments, time, effort, energy, whatever it may be, finances, resources. We can't, log we can't logically justify a time or effort or financial investment or resource investment if we don't predict a return. And so when you don't have the right numbers for your calories and protein, okay, and you are only focused on quality and not focused on quantity, okay, and uh, when you don't see results fast enough, you're gonna wanna throw in the towel. This is not to say that you need to do like a 30 pounds in a one month sprint, new year, new me, or something like that. Absolutely not, we're gonna talk about consistency later, but it does mean that you need to see freaking results. You need to see your body changing day to day in the mirror. Okay, and so what we do is we start off with that 500-ish to 700-ish calorie deficit in the beginning. You see the results. You see the fat melting freaking off, and you're being consistent because you changed your identity, right? And you're changing your default actions. Um, and uh, with that, uh, we actually increase calories over time gradually, okay? We increase calories over time gradually because you're building more muscle in the process. You can tolerate more calorie intake. You can eat more food 
while keeping the fat off as you build muscle. So that's why we do the calorie first dining. Um, last thing here is the protein progressive overload. Um, same kind of reason here with the protein progressive overload is uh, a lot of people will say just as a general rule that everybody needs one gram of protein per pound of body weight. That's a really good general rule. Um, I recommend it um, if you're not getting extremely specific, but we're trying to see the best results possible. Uh, it's important to remember that one gram per pound of body weight of protein is a catch-all, right? It's good for everyone, but to get the best results possible, you should actually be going off of your body composition because somebody like me who is under 15% body fat, 190 pounds, I have more muscle than the guy who is under 95 pounds, but 25% body fat and has less muscle, but more fat. And so I literally need more protein to support my body composition than the person with less muscle. Um, and so what that means is if you are the, 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 the higher your body fat percentage, okay. So the more fat you have compared to muscle, actually the less uh, percentage of protein you need. So for example, if somebody is over 15% body fat, they're not seeing abs or over 20% body fat, over 25% body fat, morbidly obese, 30% body fat plus, right? Um, then you don't need one gram of protein per pound of body weight. You can be closer to 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight, 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. That also makes it really, really easy to build the default action of getting your protein consistently. Excuse me. All right, that makes it more attainable. That makes it more doable. And then as you build muscle and get leaner, um, because your protein needs go up, then you move closer to one gram per pound of body weight. So somebody who's in my body composition it makes sense to be at about one gram per pound of body weight, right? But if you're a higher body fat percentage, then you can start with like 0.7 to 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight daily. Um, and then you, you increase that over time, protein per load, okay? Now let's talk about uh, training. Okay, this is something I'm really, really passionate about. Um, not just because I love training and you know, it's, it's one of my passions, um, and it's fun, and I've built the psychological association with training and a huge reward and huge benefit because I know I'm honoring the temple of God. I know I'm building my body to be able to lead and inspire the people who look to me as a leader. I know that every room that I walk into and every single person that I meet and every single hand that I shake, the people who I meet and network with automatically assume that I'm disciplined, automatically assume that I can keep promises, automatically assume that I can work hard, that I have grit, because my body is a display of that. Um, but uh, I really like the aspect of efficiency because I'm an entrepreneur too. I am building this business. This business is, is obviously, it's my business, right? It's what I'm gonna use to generate the cash flow to build my wealth, um, but it's also part of my God-given mission in life. So I'm extremely passionate about freaking building default kings. <laughs> um, and uh, what that means is, I'm not spending hours in the gym every single day. That's just, that's not me. I'm not a gym bro, okay? I want to train efficiently. I want to get more out of one set than everybody else in the gym is getting out of three, okay? And uh, I'm personally a nerd about it. <laughs> but uh, what we do in the in the Kingmaker training protocol is we just give guys the most efficient training programs possible. So you're not going to the gym and doing an hour and a half long, two hour long CrossFit workout that might build some muscle, but is more likely to just throw out your shoulder and just burn some calories and make you sweat and feel good, which is fine temporarily. But what we do is we focus on um, the resistance training aspect of it, and we have some resistance training principles that I reveal that lead to you gaining muscle as fast as humanly possible, okay? Um, and building the functional strength as fast as humanly possible with as least time required as humanly possible. Um, and then we don't do cardio as a, as a form of weight loss. It's not that you're not allowed to do cardio. Like if you really enjoy running um, as a challenge, as a mental challenge for fun, then that's fine. Right? I personally, I do jiu-jitsu as well. I do combat sports, Muay Thai, um, and that's technically cardio, um, but I don't do it for fat loss. I do it because I love it, because it sharpens my mind, because it's a great way to connect with other men, um, and it's a great way to develop the skill of self-defense because I believe it's our role is meant to protect our loved ones. But anyway, um, that's not a part of my fat loss routine. <laughs> that's a part of my being a better man routine. Um, you don't need to do cardio for fat loss, and so we don't program cardio uh, for fat loss specifically. Um, so anyway, in terms of the program actually being e uh, efficient, so getting the best results for your time, the only way for that to take place is for it to not be a cookie cutter thing that you can just get from any app or find online or download for 15 bucks on some freaking ebook. Um, it needs to be built for you. It's going to take into account your limitations, your schedule, your nuances, your equipment access, etc. And because it takes all those thing in, things into account, 
you have more of a straight line to the end goal destination. It's more of a linear progression versus not, you know, just throwing darts at the wall, hoping that something sticks, right? So it's built for you. Every single program that we build is bespoke as can humanly possibly be bespoke. One of my clients in England introduced me to that term. <laughs> Speaking of the customize, customize, customization of his actual program, um, it's monitored one-on-one by your client success coach. So we have a person in default kings who his entire freaking job when he wakes up every single day is open up your file, answer your questions so that you can reach your goals as fast as possible, keep you accountable, make the adjustments in your program before um, like you need them, right? Reroute you from the traffic that's ahead so you don't just get stuck in freaking traffic and wonder what the heck is going on, why am I seeing no results? Why am I plateauing? He reroutes you before you get there so you still get to the end destination, lose the body fat and keep it off. Um, and uh, we focus on intensity uh, over volume. Again, um, high volume types of training like CrossFit, it, it, it's not that it can't work again, but it just takes so much more time. You have to do so many more sets. And, and, and literally just scientifically, like it, it could work, but you don't have freaking 10 hours a week to be lifting weights. Like that, that's not what this is about, right? Um, so we focus on training more intensely so that you can literally do less total volume, less sets, shorter workouts, but get more of an effect, okay? Um, and then again, we already kind of touched on cardio, um, but the biggest thing is that with cardio activity, and here's really why we don't use it as a fat loss tool, the amount of calories that you can burn from like running a mile is something like around 200 calories, depending on your body weight, your actual muscle mass percentage, that's a ballpark figure, but you, you can burn maybe a few hundred calories by running a mile which is going to take you the time of putting on a running shoe, stretching, running the 10-minute mile, whatever it may be, um, coming back, showering, yada, yada, yada. That's what's going to take to maybe burn 200 calories. The way that you can reduce 200 calories is simply by having the default action built of not eating chips at the end of every single night, right? Or knowing exactly what foods to eat in your meals. So it's just so much more efficient to lose body fat via being consistent with your nutrition than it is to trying to lose body fat via doing cardio. One of the just most hilarious examples that I've seen of this is um, we actually signed up for an Ironman 70.3 uh, the month of December. And I was watching a bunch of the people who were finishing this Ironman, which is an endurance event, by the way. It's um, a 1.2 mile swim, 56 mile bike, and a 13.2 mile run, half marathon. Um, a lot of the people who were finishing this Ironman were overweight, were over 25% body fat, were obese, were jiggling as they walked across the finish line. They were extremely unhealthy, definitely had metabolic disease, cardiovascular diseases, etc. cetera. Um, and they ran a lot. They finished an Ironman, right? They were running regularly. They can run a half marathon after biking 56 miles and swimming a mile point two. Um, and they still were overweight. And that's because no matter how much you possibly do cardio, you can do more cardio than literally anyone in the world, most people will overeat to the point at which no matter how much cardio you do, you will keep the fat on. You won't lose the fat. Okay. So it's, again, it's not that you're not allowed to do cardio and I'm not saying I'm a cardio hater. I literally do it. I literally do jujitsu. <laughs> That's extremely high intensity cardio. Um, but I don't do it for fat loss and you don't need to do it for fat loss. And I was very, very lean and sustained leanness for multiple, multiple years well before I ever did jujitsu. Okay. So, um, yeah, can it's not that you can do cardio, but it should not be your main fat loss mechanism. And it's definitely, definitely not the way you're going to sustain body fat loss. Um, if you do end up actually, you know, doing some sort of cardio, make sure it's easy, make sure it's enjoyable. You don't want to be like jogging on the treadmill if you don't enjoy that. Find something like just regular pickleball with your family or walking your dog or walking with your family at the end of the night. Maybe it's doing jujitsu with a friend or your son or your business partner or something like that. That's what Joey and I do, right? If you are going to find more activity, then make sure it's easy, make sure it's enjoyable. Find an alternative. Okay, let's continue. And before we continue, um, I just want to show you guys like what's the actual... How does this actually look like in real life? Because I'm making um, this seem very, very easy conceptually, but what does it actually look like, right? So in terms of actually changing the default actions to having the identity shift, um, here is some of the examples of that taking place in real life. This is Tom Luden. He lost over 50 pounds, uh, 57 years old. 
He says, about six months ago, I was on my initial Default Kings marketing call. When I was asked what my goals were, I threw out the number of losing 50 pounds and losing 30 in the next 12 weeks. Easy to throw out numbers and why not go big? And I was already trying to take, trying down to try something new. Um, I was already to try something new uh, because what I was doing wasn't working on my weight and slowly drifted up over the past 15 years from about 170 to 235. So we gained 65 pounds in 15 years. Do the math. Um, and as of yesterday, he's down to 185 or something, which is about 50 pounds less than I did the day of the Zoom call. That's a win. Uh, but I've learned are probably bigger wins um, along. Uh, are, what, what I've learned are probably bigger wins long term. So here, here are his bigger wins. Uh, number one, uh, default actions, which is the whole point of the program. My default actions are now very solid and maintainable eating exercise and activity plan. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about default actions. Um, he says here, I've seen great results and also see that there's good a good future in front of me because of his consistency and default actions. I weigh less than I have since 2007, and I'm definitely stronger than I have been uh, since my, since the 1990s. Uh, that's awesome. Here's Avery Kuman. He says, good, good, man. <laughs> Crazy that we're that far in, but really good. I mentioned to Chris, too, but I definitely feel better. My workout the other day uh, was like a perfect testament to the program that changes I'm seeing in my default actions. Um, negative 13 Fahrenheit with 10 inches snow. A couple months ago, I would have curled back into bed and said, screw that, but instead I got up at 5.30, shoveled the sh- the shoveled uh, the walk in. 5.30, shoveled the walk, and then got my lift in. I'm pretty, I'm feeling really good. And on top of that, starting to see the physical changes uh, come to, come to uh, losing inches around the waist and belly and gaining them around the biceps, right? So gaining muscle at the same time. Uh, here's Luke Smith. Um, he says, but the good thing is that being absolutely miserable in your own body is a powerful teacher. At 470 pounds, something had to change. When you dread the most basic daily movements because of heavy breathing, heart racing, and the strain it brings, it's time to change. This is him now down 66 pounds. Um, he says, I will, have an, I will have high energy, I will change. When you begin uh, to uproot the lies planted in your mind and replace them with truth, your identity shifts and you see yourself differently. And then your default actions will follow. Am I right, Joey and Gabe on Twitter? What did we just talk about? Change your identity, change your beliefs, change your thoughts, change the way you view yourself. Your default actions will follow. Canon, another example. LMAO actually lost weight and had my lowest weigh in on my trip with no tracking, okay, while well, on vacation. I enjoyed all the food and wanted to eat and was working out and walking a lot. I guess the default actions really do work. Here's Liam Gentile, one of the default actions. One dose of default actions greater than everything else. Uh, here's my teen. Um, bonus win following the call today. I just remember these two bottles of wine that I had in my fridge. In my old life, uh, these would have gone been gone within two days. Guess when I bought them? A few days before I started at Default Kings back in August 2022. Talk about kicking uh, those previous default actions. Um, a few other examples I can give you here. <laughs> Let's see. I agree with Default Actions Framework. I had uh, 29 BMI on the 1st of June. I lost my job, which gave me some time. Um, after 15, day of, 15 days of research, I should diet to replace what I eat, rice, potato, and fast foods from my diet with protein, fiber-rich foods. So him, him just making the default actions. Um, he actually just followed some of the advice that we gave on Twitter. He wasn't even in the program. Uh, Alex, who lost over 50 pounds at this point, you do not need to lose weight. You need to change your default actions and create atomic habits. Here are some of the actions that I've changed along the way. Joel, um, who saw abs up after 40. Um, bro, you and this program have me so motivated that I'm operating like a machine. The workouts and protein first strategy have become full default actions. I feel great. I think I can just go on this forever. All these other guys talking about uh, the identity shift and the default action shift. Okay. Now, um, let's see some guys actually implementing the default actions, the easily eating system, the Kingmaker training protocol. Um, we have my man, uh, Alex here. <laughs> Guys, I lost weight on my freaking trip. That's what I mean when you don't actually have to like cut out your favorite foods. You don't have to give up eating fun foods um, to lose the weight. Wade Chilco woke up this morning about my lowest weight since June 2020, all while eating a full pint of Halo type ice cream yesterday. Right, still eating ice cream. Um, my wife even remarked how she doesn't understand how I can eat big portions of good food and continually continuously lose weight. Having the freedom to eat what, when, and how often have been game tra- game changers. Okay, um, his Renfo scale says he's gaining a bit of muscle as well. All of this after a couple days of Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, this happens, right? Um, old me would have thrown off track from the big cheat day and the rest of the week leading to the rest of the year would have been a I effed up, so let's start fresh January 1st. <laughs> uh, still got a long way to go, but what at first seemed like an insurmountable obstacle now seems perfectly achievable. achievable. Could crush your week. Um, 
Nick L blood sugar dropping um, from 220-ish to 97. Um, let's see what else we got. Actually came back from vacation lighter than before. Don't seem to have lost much of my A in my strength. Another one of our guys just had to check up with my doctor back in early December. My blood pressure was very high, like 150 to 110. Uh, they started me on meds by January. is down 135, uh, 95 today. After about six weeks with DK, I hit 121 over 78. Um, this one's funny. Uh, I don't mean to be insensitive. I don't mean to sound insensitive to people who are struggling to drop weight, but this has honestly been pretty easy. I haven't had to suppress hunger. Once to stay under my calories, my protein shakes taste amazing, and I get to eat, eat all day, which I love. Um, Ryan Black. Hey coach, been a while. Wanted to send you a quick update in case you want it for your marketing. Um, one year ago, today you and Jack reshaped my life. Appreciate y'all. Um, there's there's just more and more and more. Here's Andre sending us a photo of the menu on um, his uh, little business class flight to, I believe this was him going to Turkey. I can't remember. He won so many freaking places um, last year. Um, but here's us helping him make the decision while he's on a flight to eat the foods that are going to lead to him losing the 20 plus pounds um here is him uh basically sending us the menu to a uh, restaurant that he goes to every single sunday us helping him make the choices around that um and then when it comes to the training again here is andre uh sending us a, a video of his gym in his um high rise in tampa uh, so that we can create a program that surrounds that um here's another one guys yo boys one thing major thing i noticed that all my sciatica pain is completely gone after staying consistent with my workouts before I started to get out of consistently walk with a limp and had constant pain in my lower back all the way down my big leg. Couldn't even lie down without intense pain. Can't believe it's gone. Not truly have y'all to thank. Um, Riz, um, who is a financial planner in uh, Canada actually says, FYI, I lost 24.2 pounds and dropped three pant sizes in uh, 12 weeks. <laughs> also set new PRs, 320 back squat, 265 deadlift, 75 pound incline rows, 45 pound incline dumbbell pinch press. Let's go. There's so much freaking more. Tony gained 7.4 pounds of lean muscle mass since working with us uh, in 12 weeks. Matt Fontaine uh, went from 215 to 187. Um, let's keep going. Anthony Scott threw in the football with the sun. His shoulder no longer aches. Um, Andre, <laughs> this is one of my favorite ones. Andre, I love you, bro. Um, Andre says, uh, com responding to one of Joey's tweets. By the way, if you don't know Joey, he's my best friend and business partner, the other owner of Default Kings. He says, I ran one mile every day for almost 365 days and nothing changed. Then I joined Default Kings and in less than 90 days, I'm down 15 plus pounds and in the best shape of my life. And it's been way easier than running. Thanks for your service. Um, if you needed any more uh, evidence to believe that no cardio is required. Um, by the way, if you need, if you want any more kind of insight on how all this works, okay, how guys get results, like going from 271 to 241, um, how Daniel stepped on the scale for the first time in years, and it was the first time he said he saw it start without a two. How Mario lost 30 for 35 pounds in 12 weeks. Um, how Steven is feeling better at 45 than he did at 35. How Eric lost 35 pounds. Um, then go to our YouTube channels and watch um, some of these videos where the guys themselves literally break it down for you. Um, Carlos, who's down 27 pounds. Martin, who's down... Uh, 50 pounds, David, who's down 15 pounds, Drew, who's down 73 pounds, um, Gavin, who we're talking about today, who's down 32 pounds, um, Alex, who's down 41 pounds, and uh, there, there's, there's just so much more where this has come from, okay? Um, now, <laughs> I don't know if I need to go through through all this. You guys get the picture. Go to our YouTubes if you want direct insight from the guys who have actually been through it. Let's get to step number three and wrap this thing up. Step number three, after you change your identity, thoughts, and beliefs, and then create your new reality is 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 uh, creating your new reality after you change your identity thoughts beliefs and, sorry and then execute your new default actions is experiencing creating your new reality putting your sustainable fat loss on autopilot let's look at what the word of god says about this sparkling water great appetite suppressant um what does the word of god <laughs> say about sustainability what does the word of God say about consistency? What does the word of God say about, you know, having your your new reality actually be your, your real life experience, not just a thing you did? This is Jesus talking in Matthew 24, 13. Okay, in Matthew 24, 13, Jesus says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. The key word here being endures. 
endures, the one who's consistent, the one who lasts, the one who sticks with it. Okay, so the whole goal of all of this, the whole goal of the entire system of the change in mindset, of the change in identity, beliefs, and thoughts, of the implementation of actual systems that work, of default actions that work, of efficient lifting, efficient muscle growth, efficient fat loss, the whole goal is for you to endure, is for you to be consistent, is for it to stick, okay? It's January 2nd, again, I am violently against the new year, new me stuff, and you will never see us promote anything like that because it's not about new year, new me, it's not about, oh my gosh, I did this thing, and why, isn't that, shouldn't that be good enough? Okay, it's not even about just joining default kings, okay? Just joining default kings, making the investment, that doesn't itself save you. It's the endurance, it's sticking to the default actions. It's having the identity shift. It's becoming the person who does this consistently. Those who endure, the one who endures to the end will be saved, okay? So that's the point of all this. The point is so that you can actually lose the fat and keep it off. The point is to be consistent. Now, um, what does the Bible say about actually enduring to the end? How do we implement that into default kings? Here's a few passages of scripture that explain this. Um, Hosea 4, 6. (laughs) I, I love it's just Old Testament language. Um, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So one of the keys in enduring till the end, one of the keys of putting your fat loss on autopilot is increasing your knowledge, okay? Um, now, when I'm saying this, what I don't mean is that at DK, we don't handle the guesswork. We take care of all the guesswork so you don't have to think about it, okay? Um, but you should and you will be learning about how to do this on your own inside Default Kings. Because if you don't learn how to do it, if you don't learn how to coach yourself over the next five years, 10 years, decades of your life, then you will relinquish ownership of the default actions and you won't stick to them. So we teach you how to do it on your own, okay? Um, here, Hosea 4, six. my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. <laughs> that thou shall shalt be no priest to me seeing thou hast forgotten thy law of god i'll also forget my children so if you forget what we talked about up here (laughs) if you forget this stuff um you know the word of god is very clear on what happens uh, if you forget that stuff anyway let's continue you need to know what you're doing and you will learn what you're doing inside default kings we'll teach you how to do it on your own um matthew 18 19 through 21 again this is speaking more to the accountability aspect that leads to, to, to consistency, okay? This is another big um, thing that we, we, we do in Default Kings is we provide you with the accountability, the fellowship. I believe that fellowship is one of the biblical keys to success. Um, here's why. Matthew 18, 19 through 21 says, Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. This one's really popular. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. We understand that the presence of God is with us when we're gathered with other believers. Um, but what people don't remember is verse 19. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Okay, so the keywords here are two of you on earth agree. That means you need to be surrounded by number one, like minded individuals, men with similar values. And you need to be surrounded with other men who believe that it's possible for you to dig yourself out of the hole that you've dug yourself into, lose the weight and keep it off. You need to be around other men who agree that that's possible. I fully agree that that's possible. Obviously, that's why I have this company, right? Um, Joey, the other owner of DK, fully agrees that that's possible. All of the men who you see here fully agree (laughs) that it's possible. Okay, and so you need to surround yourself with people like this. Okay, if two of you on earth agree about anything, they ask for it, it'll be done for them by my Father in heaven. Um, and then Proverbs 27 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Inside default kings is where iron sharpens iron, especially for this specific goal of losing the weight and keeping it off. Okay, we're gonna teach you and give you the knowledge with our Lean Body Master class. It's a video module course that teaches you how to coach yourself. Um, obviously, we have the identity change the accountability and the fellowship here in the actual inner circle um, plus the knowledge that actually leads to sustainability um, so you we teach you how to do it and we surround you with people who agree that it's possible we surround you with other iron that's going to sharpen you um, and when that happens your default actions get ingrained at a subconscious level and it becomes just like business right your inputs lead to your outputs it's delegated it's systemized you just have to show up and run your numbers right so 
here's a few more examples of all this taking place. Eric, who's down 30 pounds. Um, Liam, who's down 19 pounds. Daniel, who's down 25 pounds. Zach, who's down 60 freaking pounds. Cole, who's down 31 pounds. Um, Jack, who's down 74 pounds. And that is the default actions framework, okay, uh, in a whole. And if you apply these three principles, these three steps, then you will lose the weight and keep it off. You will change your default actions. You will finally become consistent. You will finally be the man that you know God is calling you to be. Your body will finally display your discipline and drive. Your body will finally be something you can use to influence and lead people because they see that you keep promises to yourself. So you will keep promises to them, right? Your body will be something that improves your first impression when you're networking, when you're leading, when you are communicating, right? Your your habits will be something that teach those who follow you, those who look to you, how to honor their bodies so that they can point people to Jesus, so that their bodies, their vehicles that God loaned them, the vehicle that God loaned to you can be a better tool for his glory. If you follow these three steps, change your identity, beliefs, and thoughts. Execute your new custom default actions. Here are the things you need to do. Screenshot this, freaking write it down. DM me on Twitter if you have a question. Um, and if you learn, okay, you gain the knowledge on how to coach yourself. Because although you can always have help with implementation, which you should do, in my opinion, just as a person, right? That's why like we pay people to help us implement the editing of this YouTube video. I don't do it myself. Um, I still need to know what's going to create an effective YouTube video. You still need to know so that you have ownership of what you're doing, what's gonna to lead to you sustain the fat, right? You need to learn and you need to surround yourself with like-minded individuals because iron sharpens iron. And when you agree on earth about anything, God's gonna do it for you, okay? So if you follow these three steps, you'll lose weight and keep it off, all right? And with all this, if you want to lose the 10 to 30 pounds, we will help you do that using our default action framework. We will teach you the biblical process one-on-one -on -one to lose the fat and keep it off by changing your default action so that you can finally become consistent and keep the weight off. Excuse me. Now, here's our guarantee. If you do our program and you work with us and obviously apply, but you don't hit this outcome, then we will refund you in full. Okay, you don't hit this outcome 10 to 30 pounds in 12 weeks, we will refund you in full. The more important part about this is <laughs> We will refund you in full if you gain a single pound back for an entire year after going through Default Kings. So if that sounds like something that would even remotely interest you, go to defaultkings.com, book a free fat loss assessment. You will speak directly with me um, or Joey, and uh, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one conversation on how to apply this to your situation, right? Because every single situation is different. When I look at all of the guys here um, that you see, not one of their situations was exactly the same. Right? My Siri just I don't know what that turned means. on. It's okay, it's Siri. Calm down. Um, but uh, all of them struggled with changing their default actions. And now they all have results like these. They all use the, the default actions framework to change those default actions. So um, that's it. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.